Now, the thing that is so significant about a picture like this is how it um, talks about uh, gender roles, actually conveys the idea of gender roles and uh, role uh, typing or gender typing, gender roles. And uh, you might want to call it even stereotyping, but typically when we're talking about the first time, it actually is the actual laying down of expectations. And all of these have everything to do with expectations about behavior and about um, expectations about, uh, about behavior of each gender. And gender is, like I already mentioned, it's socially constructed here. And in a little boy having his own little mower that follows behind dad, uh, the the thing to keep in mind is is that this is a good example of what I talked about of uh, socialization. Little boys learn about how to behave as men by watching dad and imitating dad, which means that part of socialization is not only uh, modeling but it's also imitation, and that's key to understanding the socialization. Uh, uh, idea. The, the thing that I want to underline for you is the idea of roles here and what are roles? A lot of times when we talk about an actor, he, he's a role actor. He takes on certain uh, prescribed behaviors that are part of a particular role and that's exactly what we're talking about here is that roles are a cluster of prescribed behaviors or actions. Prescribed by whom? Well, by, um, by society, by the culture. Um, and so uh, the, the vast amount of stereotyping we had um, around men's and women's roles uh, were the, identified the expectations we have about how a woman is to behave and how, a men, how men are to behave. And when they don't conform to that particular expectation, then there's certain consequences or uh, punishment, if you want to call it that, that uh, come through uh, this society at large, if you will. So society assigns each of us to a social category that we refer to as male or female. And the result is what uh, I referred to earlier in terms of gender identity. Now. When we uh, disconnect this from um, biological anatomy, uh, biological determination, then suddenly this, this whole idea of identity is up for grabs. And so we, uh, one of the key uh, ways that we learn it is through what is extremely powerful, and it's called the social learning theory. And this plays a huge part of um, this up here. Imitation is part of the social learning theory. And, and so uh, observation is part of the social learning. Uh, we can watch chimpanzees in the wild imitate one another and learn new behavior accordingly. So imitation is also part of it. Eventually, there is a consolidation um, and a uh, uh, synthesis, if you will, of this behavior into the overall identity of the person that we're talking about. But when, when uh, uh, the actual, uh, a, when a particular behavior is is uh, uh, displayed, and it fits with the social with the social expectations, then approval is gained. When it is not then punishment is forthcoming, and that may be the lack of attention. That may be actual, um, you know, a dad saying to a little boy, you don't want to be a sissy. That would be a good example of that. And the, the way that kids uh, incorporate all these things is what we refer to as gender schemas. And schemas are just kind of a sophisticated uh, categorization um, uh, categorization, categorization uh, um, scheme, if you will. It's a way of categorizing the world. And so we, we have certain boxes 
for how uh, boys are to behave, and these would be called schemas. They're places where we keep kind of all of our uh, understanding. The same thing is true for girls as well. Increasingly, these uh, these boxes are breaking down, and that's not bad. It's but it's not always entirely good because you end up having people who are very confused about where they are. Uh, one of the biggest uh, 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 groups, very vocal, not biggest, but one of the most vocal groups that you're going to hear is the LBGT group. And when I put that up, most of you probably will be able to identify the lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender um, demographic, if you will. And these people essentially indicate that they feel like they were, they were one gender born into another body, and they refer to themselves as transgender people. Um, this uh, uh, movement, even in our culture today, is as, uh, as almost violent as it has become, is loosening the, the uh, boundaries around things that we find comforting, we find clear, uh, we find an ability to understand the world that way. And for those people that are part of these groups, uh, uh, these groups of people, um, they find themselves in a very difficult spot because they're in a culture that is predominantly heterosexual uh, and predominantly uh, poised to support and encourage marriage between one man and one woman. And the, the huge uh, dust-up over uh, the CEO of Chick-fil-A indicating that he supported traditional biblical uh, definition of marriage and the outcry about that um, it says something about w what we're going to be seeing into the future around around this particular uh, this particular issue.